in just over 10 minutes, right there on the sandy, windy coastline, powerful artillery emplacements can be quickly set up and ready to obliterate any fleet that dares to show its face within range. This creates a veritable death zone of sunken ships in the surrounding waters. This is what a small military force can accomplish when equipped with the most advanced mobile coastal defense systems in the world. You may not be aware, but these mobile coastal defense systems typically consist of a command vehicle, a few missile launching trucks, and some support vehicles for reloading the missiles. Despite their relatively small size, these systems pack a powerful punch. They have strong, accurate firepower, are highly maneuverable, and can be quickly deployed even in complex terrain. This makes them an incredibly cost-effective solution for establishing robust coastal defense positions against amphibious assaults. Additionally, they are well suited for defending isolated areas like peninsulas and islands, helping to reinforce the front lines while also supporting naval surface forces operating at sea. If you're curious to see how these missile systems would engage enemy warships, just have a seat right here on the beach and wait patiently. The main event is about to begin. Ah, here they come now. These are the vehicles that make up the K-300P Bastion P Coastal Defense Missile System, straight from the land of the Rus. A typical Bastion P firing battery has one, two command and fire control vehicles, which are built on familiar six-wheeled Kamaz truck chassis commonly used by former Soviet bloc nations. The rest of the battery consists of four self-propelled missile launchers and four reloader resupply vehicles all mounted on eight-wheeled chassis and armed with the standard P-800 Yakont anti-ship missiles. Beyond just the hardware, as one of the world's largest and most experienced weapons exporters, the Russians are known for their flexible sales policies. They'll happily customize the systems to meet a customer's specific needs, trimming down the standard $150 million configuration used by the Russian military or even throwing in extras like the automated Monolith B Coastal Surveillance Radar or 1K130E Airborne Targeting System to significantly enhance the system's accuracy. It's one of the key reasons why countries like Vietnam and Syria have become particularly fond of the Bastion P, but that's not even the most important reason. Look at the powerful jet of exhaust from the missile engines on the screen. The P-800 Yakont is really pushing that missile up to incredible speeds. After reaching a certain altitude, it'll be flying at over three times the speed of sound, making it the fastest and most uninterceptable missile in this lineup. And on top of that, the P-800 Yakont has a fire and forget capability that allows the launcher vehicle to operate independently for a short period after firing. This not only boosts the missile's effectiveness, but also helps keep the crew safe by allowing them to quickly move to a more secure location, reducing the risk of a counterattack from enemy naval or air forces. Not only are these missiles hard to shoot down, but the P-800 Yakont system can launch 250 kilo warheads to accurately strike targets like destroyers or frigates from over 300 kilometers away using a steep diving trajectory. Even massive aircraft carriers like the US Navy's USS Nimitz, displacing hundreds of thousands of tons, would only need three or four of these missiles to completely destroy them. And right after that, all the soft-bodied and shelled marine creatures will be very grateful, as humans have just provided them with brand new high-quality metal homes. Rumor has it, the K-300 Bastion system may also be able to utilize the coastal anti-ship variant of the BrahMos missile considered by many to be the world's most dangerous anti-ship weapon, with the ability to strike targets from 290 kilometers away at Mark III speeds. So, establishing a layered coastal and island defense 
using the K-300P Bastion P missile systems, combined with the operations of small corvettes and frigates, is evaluated as an extremely cost-effective and efficient solution for countries with expansive peninsulas and island chains along their coastlines. In terms of pure anti-ship firepower, chassis mobility and cost-effectiveness, the K-300P Bastion P truly has no equal. However, if we also consider the newer, less battle-tested Club M missile system, that would be another name that can't be ignored in this discussion. And it's the second coastal defense missile system we'd like to introduce to you today. While not as widely publicized as the Bastion, the Club M actually outperforms it in terms of mobility and rapid deployment capabilities. All of the system's components are mounted on eight-wheeled truck chassis, giving it the ability to traverse 701,000 kilometers at speeds up to 70 kilometers or H. Plus, each Club M launcher can be configured to carry four to six anti-ship missiles, depending on the mission. Beyond just its mobility and ease of setup and configuration, the Club M can also fire both ground attack and anti-ship missiles, making it the most versatile coastal defense system in this lineup. This is because the Club M is capable of launching both the 3M54E straight-flying anti-ship missile as well as the 3M14E land attack missile. The designs are quite similar, despite the vastly different tactical capabilities. For the 3M54E anti-ship variant, it weighs in at 2.3 tons and can strike targets up to 220 kilocons away with its hefty 220 kiloclos penetrating warhead. It flies at just 20 meters above the water, then dives down to 10 meters as it closes in on the target, slamming into enemy warships at over 2200 Mepin Metisites to punch through their air defenses. This incredibly complex flight profile makes the 3M54E extremely difficult to intercept. For larger targets like amphibious assault ships and aircraft carriers, there's also an upgraded 3M54E1 variant with a massive 400 kilo warhead more than enough to cripple vessels displacing tens of thousands of tons. As for the 3M14E land attack missile, it's a bit lighter at 1.77 tons, but packs an even bigger 450 kilos warhead. This allows the Club M to engage ground targets from over 300 kilometers away. And on these land attack variants, the Russians have integrated advanced active radar and satellite guidance systems to ensure pinpoint accuracy against artillery positions and other hardened targets. By being able to seamlessly switch between anti-ship and land attack missiles, Club M operators can really catch their opponents off guard, alternating strikes against naval and ground targets in a way that makes it nearly impossible for the enemy to effectively defend against. And operators don't even have to worry too much about missiles missing their intended marks, as each complete BAL club system comes equipped with both active and passive radar systems to guide the missiles onto their targets. Compared to older Soviet-era systems, the fire control equipment in the Club M's command vehicle is significantly more advanced able to integrate real-time targeting data from sources like reconnaissance aircraft and drones to enhance its tactical coordination. The active radar alone has a detection range of 250 kilinos, which can be extended to 450 kilinos in passive mode. The interesting thing is that from these standard Club M systems, the Russians have also developed an even more unique and versatile missile launcher platform called the Club K or Club Kaliber. To really appreciate the ingenious nature of this missile system, let me show you something on the screen. Yes, what you're looking at is certainly not a typical export shipping container, and there's no frozen cargo inside either. That decorative metal cladding that makes it look just like a regular container is actually part of the clever design. In times of crisis, these can be quickly loaded onto any available rail car or cargo ship, turning it into a mobile missile launch site. All they need is room to fit three 67 cubic meter containers that house the missile launchers, fire control, and combat management systems. 
With this perfect camouflage, the Club KG Caliber systems don't even need to rely on external targeting assistance, which would risk exposing their position and getting attacked. So, the Club M Club and Club K Caliber systems are both quite impressive, but their real-world capabilities haven't been fully proven yet. In a way, that's helped the original K300P Bastion system maintain its position as the Russian military's premier coastal defense heavyweight. Uh, but did you know that to develop the K300P Bastion, the Russians actually partnered with another former Soviet country? The name of that country is one of the four choices below. Let me know which one you think is correct. A. Tajikistan B. Ukraine C. Kazakhstan D. Belarus Time's up. Go ahead and leave your answer in the comments and we'll reveal the correct response towards the end of the video. And speaking of the precarious geopolitical climate, if you're worried about potentially having to face off against China in the future, given their increasingly close relationship with Russia, you could always pop over to Norway and enjoy some of their famous pickled lutefisk to calm your nerves. While you're there, you might want to inquire about purchasing their Naval Strike Missile Coastal Defense System. It's considered a pretty capable counterpart to the K300P Bastion. This system integrates advanced maritime surveillance and targeting radar, similar to the NASAM's air defense system. It operates as part of a networked sensor grid, establishing a comprehensive real-time tactical picture to enhance situational awareness. As a result, the Naval Strike Missile Coastal Defense System can simultaneously track up to 48 targets and engage 12 of them. And if you happen to be a well-heeled individual with plenty of gold, diamonds and oil to spare, you can even choose to overwhelm a single target with a concentrated salvo of 12 missiles. It's a bit overkill, but the probability of mission success skyrockets. While it's unclear if the Norwegian's missile system can be disguised inside civilian containers, like the Russian Club K Kaliber, the modular design does allow for integration onto various ground vehicles. In 2021, the US Marine Corps even trialed mounting the naval strike missile on a remote-controlled mobile launcher vehicle as part of preparations for expeditionary forward basing operations. The idea is for Marines to shuttle these mobile missile systems between dispersed outposts on peninsulas and coastlines in the Pacific. Similarly, in the Netherlands, the naval strike missile is adapted for rapid installation on fixed sites, wheeled vehicles and naval vessels. A typical coastal defense battery would include three missile launchers, a resupply truck, a battery command vehicle, three fire control vehicles, a mobile communications center, and a mobile radar. Compared to the P-800 Onyx or Yakont missiles from Russia, the Naval Strike missile and its upgraded 1A variant sacrifice a bit of range and speed. But thanks to their composite construction and advanced guidance, they can still attack targets over 200 kilometers away while remaining virtually undetectable to enemy radar. They can also automatically maintain an extremely low-flying, evasive flight profile, even in bad weather, making them very hard to intercept. And as a true multi-purpose system, the Naval Strike Missile can be outfitted with either a powerful titanium-reinforced penetrator warhead or a controlled fragmentation warhead to expand its lethality against different target types. Thanks to its impressive capabilities, the Naval Strike Missile Coastal Defense System has been widely adopted by some of NATO's strongest members, including the US, Poland, the UK, and Spain. With the US Navy and Marine Corps maintaining a presence in the Asia-Pacific, this missile is seen as a key part of their efforts to enhance joint operations across the maritime, air, and land domains including amphibious island hopping maneuvers. Finally, let's take a journey out to the southwest corner of Japan 
to the Ishigaki and Yonaguni Islands. Unfortunately, you won't be treated to the same level of hospitality as in Norway, aside from the stunning island scenery. This area lies along the first island chain surrounding China, a major power since World War II. It's also where Japan has deployed its Type 12 coastal defense missile systems to guard against any historical tensions with China potentially flaring up. The Type 12 is considered Japan's premier missile defense for island territories, thanks to its ability to be rapidly deployed even in rugged mountainous terrain. The missile launchers and resupply vehicles are integrated onto heavy eight-wheeled recovery trucks developed by Mitsubishi, which can carry 7.2 tons of munitions while maintaining speeds up to 100 km h over rough terrain. The Type 12 missile itself is quite unique. While it may not be as fast as Russia's P-800 Onyx or as stealthy as the naval strike missile, it can be launched straight up, then guide itself to the pre-programmed target, avoiding obstacles along the way, and to counter surprise attacks on critical island positions. The mobile Type 12 radars continuously scan for offshore threats, rapidly relaying target coordinates to the dispersed launch sites hidden in the rugged terrain. This makes it extremely difficult for the enemy to pinpoint and suppress these coastal defences before they can engage. While the Type 12 missile systems being deployed by Japan along its southwestern island chain only have a 200 km range, similar to the naval strike missile, rumour has it that in the event of rising tensions in the region, they'll be upgrading to 400 km range variants. And some sources even suggest Mitsubishi has plans to further extend the Type 12's reach beyond 1,000 km, allowing Japan's defence forces to interdict and strike even the largest enemy surface ships as soon as they depart port. Indeed, modern coastal defence systems and small combatants are often the ideal choice for island nations. The nimble small ships can patrol contested waters and confront potential aggressors, while the shore-based missile batteries serve as an unyielding firewall to prevent amphibious landings. But those are just the thoughts of military knowledge. We're curious to hear your perspective. Feel free to share your views in the comments below. And now, the moment you've been waiting for, the correct answer is D, Belarus.